Welcome to Indiana Sports Beat Radio, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Know your role and shut your mouth, you jabroni! Fires upfield into the end zone, and it's caught! Jelani Woods! Touchdown! I-N-D-Y! A 43 point night for Tyrese Halliburton! How do you like that, buddy? Galloway drives all the way to the hole, throws it up, got it! Indiana's got their first lead of this contest. It's pretty simple, I win. Google me. Now, here's your host, Jim Coyle. Hello, everybody. Welcome in another edition of Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Hope you're doing well. Post-National Championship Day. Lots to get to. Mike DeCourcy joins us today, Corona Cooser. Uh, and lots to talk about. Look who decided to show to, up to work today. I'm very happy to be back. Room. Back in the Very friendly confines, John, the producer, uh, after taking a trip around the world. That's right. A little what trip to the happiest place on earth, as they say, Disney World. Didn't expect to enjoy it as much as you I did. We Disney went with some World? Friends. Yeah, I did go to Disney World. And I wouldn't have gone had it not been for some friends that made the trip a little bit cheaper. And uh, we had ourselves a good time, so... I recommend going to Disney at least once as an adult. I think it's a lot more fun as an adult than as a kid. Yeah, I, I bet. Uh, but hey, uh, I'll tell you who else is going to Disney World. The Yukon Huskies. That's right. They win their uh, sixth national championship in 25 years, people. They are Think the team of, of the 21st century. You could well, say. They're the team of any century minus uh, those UCLA teams. Uh, there has been no one dominated a period of time like UConn has since UCLA won seven in a row in uh, the late 60s, early 70s. And uh, a lot of similarities there. Both had teams that... Uh, we're being supplied money. One was legal. One wasn't. <laughs> but uh, UConn, six national championships in 25 years. That That's, in this day and age, it's, it's mind-boggling to think about that. And with three different coaches in this period, it's crazy. They become just the second team ever to win back-to-back -back national championships. Dan Hurley becomes just the third coach ever to win back-to-back -back or more national championships. Has a shot to three-peat. And I won't say it, no shot to happen because they lost 75% of their offense and three players to the NBA off of last season's team. But uh, he rebuilt. And... I'm not bragging, but it's just telling you as fact of telling you why I said for the last month that Purdue was not going to win the national championship. Uh, someone had asked me a question or commented, and, and so I had to do some research, and, and it led me down this rabbit hole where I found that the last five national champions had a minimum of four NBA draft picks on their roster, and Purdue had how many? Take one for 500, John. What is Uno? Yes. Uh, they have one. And you want to see that bear it out? Zach Eady, 37 points. The rest of Purdue's team totaled 23. That's what you call shut down. Braden Smith, not good enough. You have to have elite guard talent, people. And as good of a college player as Braden Smith is, shut down. I, <laughs> the golf pro here at, uh, he had a, a bet, a prop bet. It was, that uh, 
Braden Smith makes more than 1.53 pointers in the game. This is on the team that led the nation in three-point shooting. He just had to make two three-pointers all night. He made one. Elite guards. And for all you IU fans that are clamoring for to be like Purdue and have a roster full of Indiana guys, stop dreaming. You need a mixture of the best talent from Indiana along with the best talent you can get, period, wherever they come from. And all 10 of those, 12 of those, are not coming from the state of Indiana. Not in this day and age, especially. This is not the 80s. And if you want to talk about Mike Woodson playing 80s style basketball, which he does, Matt Painter, great as a guy and coach as he is, that doesn't work either. You cannot. He, what's Purdue going to be like without Zach Eady? Let I mean, me tell you, thirty-seven and twenty-three. They've always done. They, I mean, they've always brought in more, more well, giants. Another, I mean, none has been more a, efficient like Eady. He's got a seven-footer on the bench, but not a Zach Eady on the bench. Oh, exactly. But they are not going to adjust their style of play. Matt Painter is who he is. And the way that Purdue plays is going to be the way that they play until he moves on from Purdue. Well, and, but this, um, this next seven footer or whatever is not going to be a generational player. It's over. Uh, Zach Eady is era, the era, the Zach Eady era is done. And it's going to be interesting, the fall off. I, I wonder what it's like in, uh, I'd say Purdue Nation, but Purdue doesn't really have a nation when you when you consider that it's, uh, I, I it's mind boggling to me when I, I knew in, ha, Indiana having, 1.1 million Twitter followers being the second most is not a, a huge a huge surprise. Purdue only having 177,000, that's mind-boggling. That's that's like a tenth. So, but um yeah, great run though. Great two-year run under Zach Eady. You do finally but get you, the final four monkey off your back which was, what, 40-plus years in the making? 44 years. So, yeah, maybe they'll hang a banner for uh, making the Final Four. Well, that's not something to be ashamed of. I'm sure, I mean, No, Indiana I'm not saying that. Final I, Fours. Well, I, I can't remember. Do they have final a separate one for Final Fours? I don't know that. I can't remember. I believe they have a banner that may have a list of all of the years, but not individual banners for each final four. Yeah, I can't remember how that is, but yeah. But anyway, great year for Purdue. Great two years for Purdue. Matt Painter has done a good job managing that uh, two-year run through the Big Ten. Now what's going to happen in the Big Ten next year? That'll be wide open. <laughs> wide open. Uh, it. Who's going to be the next big thing in the Big Ten? Illinois, um, Indiana has a shot if they refill their roster. And, and there are so many, holy cow, so many different uh, recruits that uh, it's too much to keep track of. I'm a, it's like I, I'm not even trying – to keep up with it in a uh, every minute by the minute movement kind of a thing because there's it's nonstop. Um, Minnesota transfer though, Farrell Payne set to visit Indiana later this week. That comes out of a, a report from KSTP TV in Minneapolis. They were the first to report the news. The Hoosiers are joined by Louisville, Mississippi State, 
Nebraska, Oregon, Texas, Texas a and Texas a and M in their pursuit of the transfer center. Indiana needs a transfer center, but talked about yesterday. Um, Todd Leary was saying that he would love to see him not have that option of having two bigs because every time Mike Woodson has two bigs, he runs them on the floor at the same time. But you're going, if you're going to run Malik Renew at the big, he's got to have a backup because he is going to get in foul trouble. And if you do not have someone to back him up, then you're going to put yourself in a bit of a situation. If you don't have great pieces around that can uh, adjust to that, and I couldn't imagine not having a backup, but I also can't imagine if you only have two of those pieces that you run them both together. You so it, it'll be interesting to see how one name all- to keep an eye on. I don't know if you all talked about this yesterday. Actually, I believe it happened after the show. Kentucky's Aaron Bradshaw jumped in the transfer portal. He's a seven-foot oh, yeah. one guy. Played on the same AAU team as Mackenzie Mbaco. So don't be surprised if Mike Woodson reaches out to Aaron Bradshaw to potentially fill that center spot. And it's going to be interesting just to see the uh, the 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 player fallout from Kentucky. There was oh, yeah. also been a there's also been a decommitment already. Yeah, that was, um, did Boogie Flam decommit? I don't know if he decommitted. Did he? I, I didn't he see was, that yet. Boogie Flam but formerly recruited by Indiana as well. I think Kentucky had the. I'm trying to remember what rated recruiting class it was, but. I think they had six top. Oh, they had a lot. It, it, it might be the number one recruiting class. They had six of the top 100 or 150 players coming in next year. But that means that those are going to get dispersed. Some will, pro- some will stay. Some will probably go elsewhere, depending on the length of time it takes for Kentucky to fill that spot. Um, I bet Kentucky, and this is just me thinking about how Kentucky works. I bet they have a coach by the end of the week. Well, you know, guesses. What are your guesses? Let me tell you who it won't be. It will not be Danny Hurley. He's already said, what? No, no way. He said, man, I just started making money. I can't afford a divorce. And taking my Dan wife is the new jersey. Dan Hurley is the new name that everybody's going to say. You have to, you have to make Dan Hurley say no. He's the new coach that gets thrown into that category. Yeah, I, he's not going to entertain that stuff. He he probably wants to uh, remain focused. Nate Oates, nope, said no. Uh, Stand in Alabama, well. <laughs> but there are other names popping around. Right. Uh, also, Jay Wright. He, I don't know if he publicly made this, but there was a there was a report that he made this claim that he was not going to be the, the next coach of Kentucky, which he's been doing TV and doing well at it. So I don't know how people really thought he would do that. But the name that I think most people believe will be Kentucky's next head coach is Scott Drew from Baylor. And a lot of people thought that he would be the successor to Calipari long before that this thing happened yesterday, obviously. And one of the reasons is because Scott Drew and Mitch Barnhart, Kentucky's athletic director, are really good friends. And that's the truth. And that's somebody who is kind of the polar opposite in terms of personality to John Calipari. They would get along so well. And he has a national championship. He brings in a lot of good players. It seems like a really good fit, at least for the administrators. And the fact that he's a winner. Uh, He'd be somebody that I, I, I don't think he would say no, and I don't think Kentucky will – I think Kentucky will absolutely make him one of their next priorities for sure. Uh, I'd say that that sounds accurate, and they can pay him – they're actually one of the places that can pay him more than what he's making right now. Um, Not sure what his buyout is, that situation. With Baylor being a private school, that stuff's usually not public information. Yeah, his salary is not exactly known, but I think it's in the five million dollar range, which Kentucky just says, eh, "Yeah, whatever." Uh, well, well, that's not a problem. Calipari was making eight point five million, I believe. Uh, but yeah, 
Carter Knox is the player that decommitted from Kentucky, a five-star commit, 2024 McDonald's All-American. But um, And he only committed a few weeks ago. He was fairly new commit to Kentucky. Yeah, so – and for Indiana fans, don't get too jacked up because I don't know how much – how many new how many of the five players that are coming you I, I I think that one more one more player like Carter Knox or Bryson Tucker or maybe two that would be it you have pieces to fill and I, I go with experience over hope, personally. But uh, we've got lots to talk about. Who's going to replace uh, Calipari at Kentucky? Masters Week. Women's title game with a record 18.7 million viewers. Pacers got lucky the other night as the NBA acknowledges they screwed up. That lots more. Mike DeCourcy on the program today. Chronic Hoosier and more. We're back with it all here on Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Brought to you by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Just go to AndyMoreHonda.com to get more to your door. And Free Think Apparel for all your apparel and promotional needs. Whether it's two dozen t-shirts for your upcoming family reunion or 200 for this season's recreational softball league. And much more. They can wrap vehicles and do all kinds of corporate Entity, just go to freethinkapparel.com today and get printing. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the market. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, John. I'm sure it's early for you in Phoenix. Oh, it surely <laughs> is. Thank you, sir. I pre we appreciate you. <laughs> it's early or late. I can't decide which. You got a fl- you got a flight this morning? I do. Yeah. Does that mean you haven't slept when you say it's early or late? <laughs> no, I slept a little teeny bit. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Mike. Well, how, how hard is it, it? going to be to do an early top twenty-five since you literally have no idea? Oh, you've already done it. Wow. Yes. Is and it I had literally. <laughs> Is it posted? Yes. It's really hard. Because uh, <laughs> you it, know almost it, nothing. Yeah, it's interesting because people get really upset about it. But Oh, I laugh at them. But they engage in it, and that's the, that's the whole that's point. That's the point. Yeah. But don't write a misleading headline. People get all... But that's the thing. I mean, in it, we basically say, look, you know, we're going to do our best here, but... Well, anybody that doesn't know that has got and and, and follows the sport and the complains, they get shut down for a year. No talking. I like that idea. It's like the soup Nazi. No talk. One year. Come back one year. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> what is it? Way too early? Top 25 or? Yep. <clears throat> oh, baby. What's that? There we go. I got it. All right. Ooh. All right. Yeah, Here we like go. Uh, it on South Walnut in Bloomington and is your one-stop shop for high-quality meats, bakery items, and now fresh seafood. Shop Shop Market and Table has the largest selection of in-house made products around and everything you need to make a gourmet meal at home. Or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection. 
and Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by the Chop Shop, home of the Indiana football and men's basketball coaches shows. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Mohanda of Bloomington. Hey, hey, welcome back. Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this post championship Tuesday and uh, post solar eclipse Tuesday. I uh, was right here at ground zero yesterday. Mike DeCourcy joins us. Mike, I was actually on the golf course. During the oh, wow. uh, totality, uh, first time in six months, but uh, it was wild. It uh, I was wearing sunglasses, and finally I was like, I had to take these off. And I'm like, it's starting to get dark out here. Uh, <laughs> and then when it and when, when it hit, it was like, wow. It was kind of wild. It looked like sunset. Um, the horizon was lit up. Uh, it was crazy. And someone uh, pointed out, did you hear the birds chirping? Like it was morning. I'm like, no, I did not <laughs> notice that. But uh, yeah, kind of crazy. What was it like out in Arizona? Uh, you, you see my room right now in, in the <laughs> background? <laughs> yeah. That's what it looked like to me. Uh, I, I had a break between BTN shows. And so I laid down on my bed and I didn't really go to sleep, but I just kind of relaxed for that period. And so I missed the eclipse. Well, you didn't miss much. It got dark for about four <laughs> minutes. <you> know. <laughs> and uh, that was it. Uh, I, I will, I'll be honest with you. All the people that drew, drove from, you know, all the states around, how far around, and all the money it was costing, I'm like, man, I wouldn't have driven to Evansville uh, <laughs> for it. But, uh, uh, but uh, I, I guess they enjoyed it. So, uh, oh, well. Uh, another eclipse for the Big Ten in the national championship as the Big Ten comes away without a title again. Haven't won one since uh, Michigan State in uh, two and a half decades now. But uh, UConn was a force that uh, I, not many people outside of West Lafayette expected to, to see this game go any different way. And for the various reasons that it exactly how it laid out, it was Zach Eady, and that was it. As uh, UConn and their elite cast shut Purdue's uh, ancillary cast down. Uh, Zach Eady, thirty-seven was he at thirty-seven? The rest of his team combined for twenty-three points. Yeah, I, 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 I did not think that UConn was going to do a lot of double teaming. I, I, that was that was one I got right. Uh, I figured they would play him relatively straight up because in large part, I mean, they have a seven, two guy. So uh, why not say, okay, we can deal with Edie one-on-one -on -one, and let's not let ourselves be beaten by three point shots. They, they knew that Purdue had a lot of different guys who could make those Lance Jones, Fletcher lawyer, Mason Gillis, Braden Smith, all very capable, if not excellent three point shooters. Uh, and and they decided, uh, UConn decided that because they have such dynamism on the perimeter, great positional size, that they would be able to effectively turn UConn toward the basket. And what's interesting about that is it was the exact same strategy that that Purdue had used specifically with DJ Horn of N NC State two days earlier. That they they Horn was able to get shots off, but wasn't able to get any off, or almost any at the three point line, or any almost any quality looks. He did fire uh, multiple times, but only made a couple. Uh, it was a lot similar to that. The difference being that that's not really Purdue's best game going to the rim. Uh, they don't really have players who excel at that with this group. Uh, I think Cam Heidi and especially. Miles Colvin will become great attacking on the rim, uh, but they weren't very uh, capable of it yesterday. It just wasn't time. They didn't play enough this year to go into a game like this with great confidence. Fletcher Lawyer was able to get the ball to the rim, but wasn't able to finish. 
Uh, Brayton Smith was able to get the ball to the rim, uh, but I thought needed to be more decisive about making plays on the perimeter when he when he when he got deep. Uh, maybe have uh, some screens set for guys like Fletcher or Lance Jones so that they could get open openings on the perimeter when they were able to get to the rim, but they weren't really uh, able to to conjure anything like that. And they wound up in a, in a two point battle against a team that was able to get points often three at a time. Uh, and then I thought that what really, uh, one of the things that su- did surprise me was UConn's inability to control defensive rebounds. Uh, they were almost, I think it was the final tally on, on the boards was 19 to 14 uh, on, on the, on UConn's offensive glass. So Purdue got 19 uh, and, and, and UConn got 14. And that's a 40, almost a 43% offensive rebounding rate. That's just not good for, for Purdue uh, to allow that. And it, it, they, so, so what, what is essentially was happening is they were getting first shot stops, which is the objective one you're defending. Get the first shot stop and then get the defensive rebound and then go. And they were getting those, those stops, but they weren't getting the rebound. I did not see that part coming. Uh, obviously, UConn's very dynamic, uh, but Mason Gillis was beaten to balls uh, on, on multiple occasions. Uh, Lance Jones was beaten to balls. Uh, Lance was a little bit better than some others. They just were not able to get uh, to, to the defensive rebound and secure them. Uh, and that became probably the biggest problem in the entire game. And it's interesting because people talk a lot about the – Big 10 in the championship game. Offensive rebounding is what beat Michigan in 2013. That and one of the worst calls in the history of the NCAA championship game. But in the end, that was a huge factor of Shane Behannon beating them up on the offensive boards in 2013. And then last night, it was everybody for UConn. It wasn't just one big, strong guy like Shane Behannon. It was a bunch of guys crashing the glass, uh, getting offensive rebounds, getting long rebounds, and making it so that UConn had to guard even more than they already had. Yeah, it uh, was certainly no one knew exactly how it was going to play out uh, this game, but uh, we knew where the crux was going to be, or at least I thought I did because I know everything. No, uh, just because we knew that Edie was going to get his. It's, it's, you're not, it's just, too hard in this in the college to stop him. Although having uh, Klingon, we knew that that was going to be a, a different challenge because he's right. a very athletic seven two. He's yeah. not just a post up guy. He's athletic. He's got length. Um, I didn't expect him expect him to be blocking Edie a lot just because of his strength and whatnot. But I didn't expect. UConn to be able to completely shut down Purdue like that. But this is two years in a row that we've seen Purdue's guards wilter when it matters. Now, I know last year there were freshmen, and and so they had had growth, and so that's why coming back this year, their expectations were that that was behind them, and and it happened yet again. And and it's not a knock on Braden Smith or Fletcher Lawyer or um, Lance Jones, but even Lance Jones didn't really get a lot done. But to me, that's the difference between elite and not elite. And one of the things that I found in researching a question to, for someone is that the last five national champions had a minimum of four NBA draft picks on their roster uh, at the time. And Purdue has one. And yeah. that makes a difference. When you have elite talent, it's just it, they're elite for a, for a reason. Oh, I, I mean, I've said that for years. And, and, and Jim, um, it, it, there has been no national champion in college basketball without a first round pick on its roster since uh, you may remember this 1987. 1987. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's a fact. And so I always, I, you know, I, I talk to people a lot about in advance of the NCAA tournament about picking a bracket and uh, oh I'm picking Houston oh really well enjoy Monday night when your team isn't playing or isn't going to win because Houston's not winning it uh, not that Houston group 
Uh, they didn't have pros. Uh, Jamal Shedd's going to play in the league, but he no one's taking him in the first round. Uh, they they didn't have it. Uh, Purdue did, UConn did, but UConn was richer in that quality. Uh, they have at least two first round picks. Cam Spencer will be a pro. Uh, Tristan Newton will be a pro. Uh, they had uh, Samson Johnson might be as well eventually. Uh, I, I, they have just they had more talent. There's no question about that. I'm not sure that I can concur with the wilt uh, idea of the Purdue guards. It, it's much different than a year ago. Uh, you're, a year ago, you were wilting against Fairleigh Dickinson. This time, you're wilting against the most dominant, the, the literal most dominant college basketball team of the expanded bracket era. Uh, they they won their six NCAA tournament games by an average of more than 23 points a game. The most prior to last night was the best team in maybe college basketball history, 1996 Kentucky, which won by 21 and a half. That's how dominant UConn was in this tournament. And it wasn't just, okay, they beat their 16 seed by 100 and then everybody else by five. This was... They beat every single team by at least 13 points. Uh, they they beat every they, every team uh, when when they beat Northwestern as badly as they did. Uh, really drummed them in the first half, and then Northwestern came back in the second half and played them a little bit better than even. Uh, who knew that like a 17 point result by Northwestern was going to be one of the best that anybody in this tournament did against the Huskies. So I I think that uh, I thought Fletcher Lawyer played great uh, up until last night. Last night, I did not think his decision making was ideal. Uh, I thought that Braden Smith played great last. It, it really relatively played great last night, with the exception of uh, making some uh, decisions that uh, that weren't positive. I, I that getting sucked into long twos early in the second half was a mistake. Uh, I, I don't know that. Uh, that if everything had gone right in those first four or five minutes of the second half, we'd have had a hugely different result. We might have had a hugely different game. Uh, we had a great game for the first, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes. We still had a good game at halftime. Uh, and then UConn took over early in the second half and, and basically made it so that Purdue was chasing the game the rest of the year. And I mean, the rest of the, the night. And you saw maybe eight or nine minutes left in the game. Uh, Matt Painter put on a press. I mean, when when Matt Painter presses, you know that things are not good uh, because that certainly is antithetical to the Purdue style. They're not going to press you unless they're desperate. And in that circumstance, desperate was a, an appropriate response. How does Danny Hurley lose coach of the year to Kelvin Sampson? Uh, I, I, actually, it has nothing to do with Kelvin Sampson. Let, right. let me just say, how does Dan Hurley lose Coach of the Year? Not only well, is he going to win back-to-back -back national titles, he did it with, in essence, a, a half different team. More than half. More than half. And I, I think it was, I think, honestly, Jim, it was laziness on the part of the voters. Laziness. They won uh, last year. I so want to see every list so I can talk to every person who voted against Hurley. The Naismith Award went to Dan Hurley. The Sporting News Award went to Dan Hurley. CBS Sports, Dan Hurley. They were the people who thought it through. Uh, Kelvin Sampson, phenomenal. Phenomenal year, phenomenal coach. But you lose 75% of your scoring and come back and are better than the team that won the national championship. There are not many things in college basketball now that are unprecedented. We've been we've been playing the NCAA tournament for more than 90 years. So it, there are not a lot of things that are going to be unprecedented. But this was. This was something we had never seen before. We had never seen a team go and lose 75% of their scoring and then come back and do it again. Now I say that I say that with great confidence a little bit less precision than I'd like because I can't find stats on 1944, 40, uh, 45, 46 Oklahoma State or 44, 45. I can't find the stats on their players for that year. But they returned Bob Curlin. And in that era, Bob Curlin scored almost half the points himself. Uh, so I'm pretty confident that it never happened before. But from Kentucky 48, 49 to now, 
No one had ever done that. No one had ever lost 75% of their scoring and come back and done it. UCLA, during their run of seven straight, uh, they lost Kareem Abdul-Jabbar from 1969 to 70. Didn't lose 75%. They lost Sidney Wicks from 71 to 72. Didn't lose 75% of their scoring. Uh, the Duke team of 91 returned almost entirely intact in 92. The Florida team of 06 returned entirely attacked in, in 2007. That's the difference. And, and it was interesting because Dan Hurley knew all of this. And I don't know if he's been reading Mike DeCourcy or whether he just had, you know, but he had all the facts when, when he was asked about repeating last night. He knew that what they had done was unprecedented. And he deserves all the credit in the world and a lot more Coach of the Year trophies than he received. I agree. Uh, we've got to take a quick break. Mike DeCourcy from the Sporting News and Big Ten Network is with us. When we come back, we'll talk about many things. In addition to the fallout at Kentucky, who will be potentially uh, the replacement there, and uh, many other things. Mike DeCourcy is with us, back with more. Brought to you by Chop Shop Market and Table, home of the Indiana football and men's and women's basketball coaches shows. Have dine-in, you can sit down dining. Deli, bakery, whatever you need. Back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. If you're looking for a home. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Dylan Sin uh, suggested in a Twitter post that um, in thinking about the Kentucky coaching search, you got to believe they'd consider a coach who knows the state was a longtime assistant and there has experience leading a major program. He has a picture of Kenny Payne below it. Oh. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. I didn't Remember, know Dylan was that funny. Six months on a 2023 Go to anymorehunter.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Remax Advanced Realty, Indy Home Pros team by Cheryl Sizemore. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Yeah. <laughs> 
Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio on this Tuesday. Mike DeCourcy with us. Uh, Mike, Kentucky obviously now looking for a basketball coach as John Calipari makes the very shrewd move of getting out of Dallas before the posse came. So he got out ahead of the posse. I think it was a smart move. I, I, I had already said that he will leave Lexington on his terms Whatever they were and when that was, I didn't. I thought that that would be a year from now, maybe. But he beat us all to the punch, and he's. But he did get out on his terms, and he's found a place that will welcome him with open arms and uh, go through another honeymoon phase. But my biggest question is, who is going to replace him at Kentucky? Scott Drew obviously has become a name bannered around. I want to throw a name out. Kelvin Sampson. Well, I mean, uh, Kelvin's a great coach, uh, but remember uh, that he's got a deal right now where at Houston, his son will succeed him. If he oh. essentially abandons Houston, why would Houston then follow through on that deal? If he retires, it's one thing. If he decides that there's another place that he wants to coach more, uh, why would Houston say, okay, we'll take Kellen? Uh, unless they are 100% convinced that he's like the best guy they could possibly get. Yeah. So I I don't see that. I think he I think Kelvin likes Houston. He's been embraced by Houston. He's been highly successful with Houston. His daughter is, uh, you know, enveloped in the program, doing marketing and promotions and that sort of thing. Obviously, he's, uh, he's got Kellen right there. So he's, he's, he gets to spend every day with his family so to speak, uh, in much the same way as Mike Krzyzewski did uh, toward, you know, in the latter years of his career at Duke. Um, I don't see that for that reason. Uh, it, 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 Drew will be the first person that Mitch Barnhart calls or has already called. My question for you is, if you're Scott Drew, why would you do it? You have been a top three seed in every year this decade, including 2010 when, I mean, 2020, when he would have been on number one. Uh, you've won a national championship. That trophy is still sitting on your desk. Uh, and if you go to Kentucky, there's no trophy, and they're waiting for you. They're demanding for you to put one there quickly. Uh, I, I think there's something to be said for, uh, for having that accomplishment and having it I, having the leeway that goes with it. It's the nature of the NCAA tournament, especially now. I mean, you look at how college basketball has changed. It's just not like it was 10 years ago. And Kentucky fans are not embracing that concept. But being a blue blood doesn't matter like it used to. Does it help? Sure. Uh, it, it, if, you're, if you're Carolina or you're Duke or you're Kentucky or you're Indiana or whatever, it certainly helps. There are reasons you got to be a blue blood. But what matters most in recruiting now? What matters, Jim? What's the answer to that question? Yeah, exactly. Money, 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 money. money. That's what matters the most. That's what matters first. Uh, and so you can see, for instance, Nate Oates, who a lot of people thought would walk to Kentucky on his knees to get, you know, like uh, the old Eddie Sutton thing. Okay, why? I'm at Alabama. I've just produced a team that was the number one overall seed in the tournament and a final four team in succession. What can Alabama give me? What can Kentucky give me that Alabama can't more money? Alabama gets 110,000 people or whatever for their football games. They don't have money problems. They can get, they can pay Nate Oates, whatever they want to pay him to keep him. And they've made it quite clear over the previous month that they want to keep Nate Oates. Uh, they 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 re-upped him when the uh, Ohio State job was out there, when the Louisville job was out there. They said, no, Nate, man, hang, we're good. And so if Kentucky came in and offered more, Alabama wanted to keep him, they'd have kept him, and they have. So uh, it's not as simple as we are Kentucky, why wouldn't you want to coach here? You have to come up with why you would want to coach here. What do you? What does Kentucky have that the other coaches program doesn't have? History isn't a factor anymore. It, it, it's just, it, it, the, the advantages that made Kansas, Kansas, or Kentucky, Kentucky, they're still there. Some of them, a lot of them, most of them maybe. But how much do they matter in the modern game? Well, let me explain to you. Carolina 
In 2022, it was in the national championship game. In 2023, they didn't even make the tournament. Kansas, in 2022, national title game. In 2024, Jim, the University of Kansas, with Bill Self, widely acknowledged, if not universally acknowledged, as the best coach, modern coach in college basketball, current coach in college basketball, could not put five good players on the floor for an entire season. They could put four on for the first six weeks. Then it was five for about a month with Johnny Furphy got better. And then it was back down to four or three when Kevin McCullough and Hunter Dickinson got hurt. They couldn't put five good players on the floor. In 2022, they had 11. And now they can't find five. It's You, you can't find the consistency that you used to in every, in every big-time program. Alabama's going to have its rough patches. Right now, they don't have any. They're going to have them, and then they'll be back. Arkansas had a rough patch with Eric Musselman. He decided he was out and going to USC. Kentucky had a rough patch. Their rough patch was pandemic year, terrible season. They didn't, they didn't have access to their freshmen until, like, the first day of practice. Then three, ups, th- uh, three upsets in the tournament. Okay? It happens. The, the team that finished second in the country this year, what happened the pre, three previous years? 14 seed, 15 seed, 16 seed. You can either live with that and hope for better because you know that your coach is elite, which is what Purdue chose and where fan base chose, or you can complain that we're better than that and we should never get upset and we should never be uh, not the best team and all of that, and you can wind up with your coach who has – consistently prior to that stretch performed in the NCAA tournament, walking out the door. I, I, I don't, I don't think that Kentucky fans understand that things have changed and that it might help them if they changed a little with it. Yeah. That's uh, that's like that. Like asking the blue skies to change to, to, to orange or something. It happened <laughs> yesterday. So it is possible. Uh, it, it, just quickly, because you've got to get out of here, catch a flight. I'm not asking for a specific name, but maybe a couple names that you think may be in the realm of, for that Kentucky job, because is it somebody that we're just not thinking of? Well, I, I proposed um, in my column, which angered Kentucky fans because they believe that I should be saying, what like, does it, Mike, what doesn't anger them? They said that, I, you know, that other lists had Nate Oates, had Jay Wright, had Danny Hurley on their list. All three were gone by the end of the first day. Yeah. I didn't have anybody gone by the end of the first day. I told you those people were going to be gone by the end of the first day. So I, I, I on my list, I uh, started with Mark Pope. I gave him the first position because Mark is an alum and he's doing a great job. He did a great job at, at uh, Utah Valley and he's doing a great job uh, at, at BYU. He's an alum. He was part of the best team that Kentucky ever produced 1996. So I put him in that position. That angered their fans, whatever. Uh, I, I included Sean Miller, who is one of the best coaches in college basketball. Uh, a tremendous coach, tremendous person, uh, and is in a position where it would be hard to say no to Kentucky because of, you know, he's at Xavier, he's in the Big East, uh, you know, the, the divide between the SEC and Big Ten and the rest of college athletics. You want to be, you know, it doesn't hurt to be on the right side of that divide. So I included him. And I got people got mad at me for that. Look, if if Sean Miller isn't good enough for you, then you need to go back to basketball school. It's that simple. Kentucky fans think they know the game. If they don't think Sean Miller is good enough for them, then they really don't know the game as well as they say. I, I'm sure there are lots of Kentucky fans out there who know that, but the ones who were responding to me on Twitter yesterday did not. Well, those who usually respond are the ones that just are chirpy, chirpy, chirpy. Yeah. What about Archie Miller? <laughs> I'm just a well, joke. There you go. Uh, That's a joke. Mike's yes. got to get out of here. He's got to catch a flight so we don't want to make him late. Make him uh, OJ it through the airport, uh, running and jumping hurdles. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Appreciate and uh, look forward to you when we see you back here. Mike, by the way, I don't know if I should say this, but oh, okay. he's yep. getting the opportunity to move back home to Pittsburgh. He's a Pittsburgh native, of course. There was spent a lot, a lot, of, a lot of time there. You, how happy are are you? Is it you? Are you happier, or is your wife happier? 
Oh, I think both of us are are ready to be back home with our family. Um, my wife retired after a 41 year career as the best public relations person in the business. Uh, her final job was at the Indiana Farm Bureau, uh, working with the wonderful Randy Crone, uh, and just a tremendous experience there that she had. Learned it, it was. I've always laughed at this, Jim. She grew up in a uh, in a row house in the the city of Pittsburgh. She had a patch of grass as big as the king size bed uh, behind me in her backyard, and she became <laughs> the voice of farming in the state of Indiana. I, I, I the, the dichotomy there will never stop amusing me. And she did a phenomenal job for them, turned it into an award-winning uh, uh, public relations and communications and marketing department. Uh, they won tons of awards. Uh, and she, so she's retiring. I am not. I am going to continue working for the Sporting News, Fox, hopefully BTN, uh, if they'll have me. Uh, and I'm and I'm still excited very much about my career, and I'm going to be continuing with you, Jim. And I'm I'm thrilled that you want to continue to have me. Oh, that's, man, you could come from Beijing, and that wouldn't change things. <laughs> <laughs> Mike DeCourcy's got to get out of here. Get to uh, heading to the airport, brother. Appreciate you. Thanks, Jim. You bet. Uh, Mike DeCourcy joining us here on this uh, Tuesday. Thanks a lot for that. And. So who's going to be that next? Brian's got a funny comment from last night. I got to put this up. Um, Edie, 37. It's not coming up there for some. There we go. Edie, 37. Westfield, Jesus, 12. Talking about uh, Braden Smith. But um, hey, Indiana fans, let me remind you of something. Purdue made it to the final four. Purdue made it out of the first weekend of the tournament. Uh, so I, I really don't get – now, I get the the rivalry thing, trust me, but Indiana fans have got to quit complaining. It is It has gotten to a point uh, that it's driving me insane. I, I'm like, just shut up. Everybody, just shut up. Stop complaining. Stop complaining about Mike Woodson. I'm not saying he did a great job last year. I'm not saying he's a good college coach. But I am saying he is the coach at Indiana and will be for next season at the very minimum. So continuing complaining about that is futile and juvenile. So stop. It's, it's just really, it's, it's really gotten up. If you're getting on my nerves about complaining, it's, that means it's gotta be really bad. Right. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll chat a little bit more about that. When we come back, we've got to take a, another break, but uh, more coming up. Chronic Coos or anybody else on with us today, John? I believe that is it for our second hour. All right, well, we'll uh, see what uh, is going on there. But uh, back with more Indiana Sports Beat Radio right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. In the yeah, well, I agree with you. Whether your opinion of Mike Woodson is good or not, I feel like as a fan, you don't do yourself any favors by continuing to bitch about it. I'm sick of it. I am sick and tired of it. Dave Portnoy won $2.7 million betting on UConn's national championship. Man, that's a good deal. How much did he bet? I mean, that's a chunk of change, but he's already worth money, I know, but. Oh my God, he bet $600,000. Oh my gosh. I had $600,000, I would have bet it. 
<laughs> I I won twenty dollars. I was a few points away from winning a hundred bucks. A few points of Donovan Klingens. He didn't hit the over for me on his personal points. Zach Eady hit the over, and I picked UConn to cover, but Donovan Klingen didn't get at least. I think he had to score fourteen for me. I think he ended with nine. He got in foul trouble though, so that kind of slowed him down a little bit. I thought about betting. Um, I didn't know. I thought this would be available on on DraftKings already, but it's not. I wanted to bet a future uh, for Indiana to whatever their over win total is for football, but they don't have it. You can you can oh. future bet the national champion, but you can't bet individual team wins yet, unless I just couldn't find it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> Come on. I don't know what the hell is happening with my computer, but it has been running slow for two weeks. Man. And it's driving me absolutely insane. All right, here we go. Series House Plans. We have several lots available with scenic views of the golf course. Contact Amy Rhoda with Rebesco Real Estate for additional information. 812-583-0919 or go to mystonecrestliving.com. That's mystonecrestliving.com for more details. This segment is brought to you by Bubba's 33 in Clarksville and Evansville. Pizza, burgers, beer. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio here on this Tuesday. Thank you so much. Uh, National Championship in the books. UConn wins back to back titles. First team to do so in uh, almost 20 years as Florida did it back in the uh, mid to late 2000s with. Uh, dag on it. I almost said it. Talked about him earlier. Billy Donovan. Heard Fun his fact, wife I just saw like, a post of of Billy Donovan, or not? I guess it, it was insinuating it was Billy Donovan. Was his wife in private, Lexington looking for homes? There's a private jet of uh, being shown on flight tracker from Chicago to Lexington. How many private jets? Uh, that it cannot. He's not even the coach of the, of the Bulls. He's the Bulls, he? Bulls coach. He's yeah. the Bulls coach? Okay. Um, it would be yeah, something um, if this if, if Billy Donovan did come back to college basketball. I don't know how likely it would be, but if there's any um, job he would take, I feel like it would be Kentucky. Well, Kentucky is, is going to swing for the fences, let me tell you. Um. Their administration is not going to. I sent out a tweet. I think it was yesterday. Hell, I don't even remember. But the UK administration is not going to cower to players forcing them into hiring a mid major level no head coaching experience coach and then and then and then and then that's actually my tweet said Kentucky's not going to be strong armed into that <clears throat> and then they won't hire a coach who is currently coming in with cheating uh not alleged but confirmed cheating charges and then, and then, and then, because that's been the Indiana situation for two and a half decades. The, the, when you take down a king, and actually this is what I said, when you take down a king, you better have a plan. And I, I'm not saying Bob Knight was a Puritan, but he was a king of the sport. He was a king of his profession. And he was at the 
the the the pinnacle of that not when he got fired but he was on the back side of that no question he was an aging king but that doesn't matter he was still a king and when you take down a king you better have a plan miles brand had zero plan whoops i just lost my camera sorry about that not only had he did he have zero plan they fumbled the ball horrifically and kowtow down to being told by the by the current players on who they were going to hire to lead the future which was bs and so that started a pattern that has not changed at indiana for two and a half decades that's and that is all on the iu administration i didn't even talk about to it's not talking about the current it, i'm going back to miles brand but it wasn't just miles brand it was adam herbert after that who basically why in the hell a president stuck his uneducated nose into an area of something he had no experience in that started IU further down a rabbit hole. But it has been that in, in, in constant motion. Tom Crean, first of all, Kelvin Sampson is the best coach Indiana has hired since Bob Knight. Yeah, I don't care if you like him or not. I don't care if you like that statement or not. It's a fact. But Tom Crean was a good hire. He did what you should do at an Indiana, and he did it without NIL. He did it without the portal. He went out and he found guys that would play, play for each other, play for the school. And half of them weren't from here. Where's Christian Watford from? Alabama. Where's Victor Oladipo from? Baltimore? Yep, Maryland. So, again, get off your high horse, people, about where everybody has to be from, A. Eh? But Tom Crean just, he, he, he ran his course. That course had run, and it ran about, uh, right after the second Big Ten title, it, it quickly went into the crapper. But here's where things got horribly bad. When you have an AD who should have never been an AD because he had as much experience being an AD as I do. But yet, he was allowed to go out and single-handedly make a hire that was one of it was the absolutely worst hire in Indiana basketball history without question. And that's a long and storied history. But then that continued. More coaches hired Tom Allen, high school head coach elevated to become a big 10 head coach. Well, how'd that work out? You have an administration that does not have people in positions that they had experience. When's the last time Indiana had an athletics director that actually had previous athletics director experience? And working under Fred Glass does not count. But anyway, if you want to look at Indiana's problems, go there and stop right there because that's where it lies. I know Scott Dolson's trying to change that. And he may have done that on the football side of things. On the basketball side of things, he's 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 kind of handcuffed. 
And again, that's that, then you've got a, a good old boy network. And of all places, you would think that that's something that would happen out of Kentucky. No, it's in Indiana where the good old boy network is alive and well. But I digress. The fact that Indiana basketball is not able to get off the mat, it's it's ridiculous. They have as much money as anybody, and that's what it takes. But guys aren't just going to come play for you because you have money. Other people have money. They also they do want to win. I got news for you. Wherever Liam McNeely ends up, you can be pissed at him all you want. But I promise you, he looked at last season and said, hell no, I'm not going to go be a part of that. And I'm not talking about the way too many fans now that have a voice. And the moaning and the groaning. He wants to win. Even if he thinks he's going to be in college for one season. He wants to be on a winning team. He wants to play in the NCAA tournament. Most do. You know, I was at the um, the high school nationals where Liam and Montverde was playing and um, playing against Paul the Sixth from Virginia. Twelve players, all ten starters. D1 level, 11 out of the 12 committed. The only one not committed right now is Liam McNeely. But they're all committed. LSU, uh, three. Three of these guys are going to Duke. And Cooper Flag is carrying the flag. And boy, will he. He's, he's, he's the next... Um, Who's their guy right now, John Boy? Um, at uh, at Duke. Duke, yeah. Uh, their star. Uh, I, I'm oh, drawing Filipowski. Yeah, Kyle Filipowski. Uh, as long as he gets over that injury from oh, yeah. late from in the, the season, where storming. yeah, from the court storming. I, I I hope he is fully recovered from that. It would it would be just a shame. Um, but anyway, I digress. Stop whining, Indiana fans. Stop it. Just stop it, stop it, stop it. I- I'm sick of seeing it. I think everybody is sick of seeing it. There comes a point to where I don't think that it has a lot of carryover as far as recruits because when you have the amount of online <clears throat> excuse me, followers that Indiana does have, which is the second largest in college basketball, You're going to have the second largest amount of bitchers. Let's be honest, moaners and complainers, because that means you have more people who don't know what the hell they're talking about, but they've got a voice. All they've got those big old fat thumbs. Stop. Just stop. It's like the the bitching goes 360, 300. 65 days a year. Quit. I know that that doesn't mean I think uh, anything is great. But it means, you know what? You're at a point. Are you going to watch the recruiting play out? Watch the upcoming season come around? Are you just going to bitch about it the whole time? Indiana fans really, it's like complaining is their way of communicating with the world. But that's my little. They don't have a right to to feel angry about it because everybody does. But no, I I get where you have to you have to realize that none of this is in your control, and you just kind of have to ride the wave sometimes, as they say. And now that we're yeah, are you writing checks? Are, are they writing checks to NIL? Yeah, exactly. How many of the how many of the moaners and the complainers are writing checks to NIL? 
I bet you a big fat 0.5%. Yeah, very small percentage. But uh, you bring up a great point. Yes. Is there reason to complain? Absolutely. Is there reason to be upset, I should say? Absolutely. Indiana should not be in this position for a myriad of reasons. And I just laid out the, the, the basis and the genesis of it. The administration. The uneducated administration that made uneducated and ignorant decisions. And how some people get into a position of making these decisions is beyond me. When you have no freaking clue as to what you're doing. But it's obvious to me, Mike Woodson has gotten the message on the recruiting side. Because they are going at light speed pace on trying to land guys out of this portal. And hopefully it's the right guys, not just guys. Because this will My make or biggest... break his tenure this season. Well, upcoming. no doubt. Absolutely. And that's another reason why for people to stop because that'll take care of itself. It's not going to be because Joe Blow that doesn't do jack squat is bitching and moaning on Twitter or Instagram or wherever. But they're, they are casting a wide net on recruiting. They are everybody that's out there they're in contact with. They've got visits coming in. You, the, they landed the the Miles or Bryson Tucker to kind of fill the spot vacated by Liam McNeely. Mike Woodson is going. My only concern is that he doesn't get it. He he gets. <clears throat> I think someone made it real to him that his recruiting lacked um, lacked some. Uh, it, there was no meat in the vegetable soup. Very little meat in the vegetable soup. Not enough. But my biggest concern going forward with him is his coaching, and I understand being upset about that. That's what we're here to do. Um, him hijacking the senior day with that absolutely ridiculously embarrassing speech that he gave, saying that he's done his job. Really, if you've done your damn job, why is everybody complaining so much? That usually doesn't happen. If you've done your job and to pander to that audience, well, what are they going to do? You've got the true fans and that, and that true fan thing. That, that is another thing that is burning my butt. There's no such thing. And to do that, that was childish. So childish. And, it, and really it was insecure. I, I you usually don't see. You No, you never see coaches at that level with that level of insecurity. And that was a complete level of insecurity without question. There's one other guy that I'm familiar with that pulled that same card a lot more frequently, I will say. And that's... Oh, uh, you're going to say Kenny Payne. I am. It's Kenny Payne. And we all know how that ship sailed or rather sank, as I should say. Yeah, but the difference there is... Well... Kenny Payne still played for uh, Denny Crum, didn't he? Yes, he, he was on a national title team. Yeah, so a little bit of similar experience minus Mike Woodson didn't win, win a national championship. Well, I don't but, think that has anything to do with their, their coaching. I think what it is, the biggest these, difference, these alumni coaches act like they're owed something because yes. they're alums, yep. and sometimes they get bitter when things aren't going their way. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's all of the issues, but – Sometimes that may be entitlement, the entitlement, baby. It's a little yeah. of entitlement. Hey, we got to take a break. Up next, Chronic Hoosier's going to join us. We'll talk more about all of this. 
Brought to you by our good friends Bubba's 33 down in Clarksville. For those of you down in southern Indiana, right off of I-65 at Veterans Parkway. Great place to watch sports, no matter what you're watching. They've got great food that is made fresh daily. Pizza, burgers, beer, back with more right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Morhonda of Bloomington. Formally- All right. Good morning, Chronic. Good morning, guys. How's it going today? Pretty good, buddy. How are you? Yo, I don't really like seeing UConn win, but I guess it's better than the alternative, so I'm doing fantastic. Yeah, there was no, uh, I didn't think there was much doubt that that was going to be the case. No, no man. I'm with UConn for, for whatever reason, but. I just, you know, it, it's. um Because they move out of a tie with Indiana for national title. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. They, that, that, I got to tell you, that's, that's absolutely freaking wild that. Well, no, the only other team to win as many NCAA titles in short of, in that short of a time is is UCLA. Yeah. UCLA. And that was and that was back when UCLA was cheating their ass off. That was back before, man. They were they were ahead of the game there. No, it's been a hell of a run. Um, you know, partly that. Um, partly, I think just more East coast, uh, drool media domination. Um, but you know, it is what it is. They, they've got a hell of a program and absolutely. But I gotta be honest. I don't, yes, because it's mind boggling. There's no basketball. It, it, Connecticut is not a basketball Mecca. No, but it's, it's, not, it's it's like Hamilton County. You know, you may say Marion County is the, the seat of Indiana basketball. That's the rich suburbs where all the top talent migrates. What did I say that uh, people are disagreeing with? <laughs> Look at their oh. comments. Yeah, How much time do still, we have? This is still about, uh, I was, this was about the damn Iowa uh, UConn game. When I said you just can't make that call, I don't care if it's if it's technically correct. It could also be you could debate it, but you just don't make it then when you haven't made it five other times in the damn night. That was my point. Oh, but yeah, I've been getting all these jack legs. Was it a foul in the first five minutes of the game? You right, never go, played guys. sports. <laughs> Bloomington, right now, get a brand new Honda with no payments for 90 days. That's right, 2023 and 2024 Honda Pilots, HRVs, CRVs, Honda Ridgelines, payment free for 90 days. Or get 0.9% APR financing for 36 months on a 2023 Honda Ridgeline. Go to AndyMoreHonda.com and get more to your door. This segment is brought to you by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Post uh, post eclipse broadcast, post national championship broadcast. How did you make it through the eclipse, Chronic? Uh, as as easily as you could possibly imagine. Uh, turn, come to find out. If you spend you know, almost half a year telling people about this traffic Armageddon that's going to happen, uh, they'll stay away. And, and lo and behold, they, they did. They listened. Uh, this gorgeous day in Bloomington. Couldn't ask for a nicer day. But, uh, you know, between four minutes of totality, uh, easy traffic everywhere you look. Uh, campus just absolutely showing out uh, in all its spring splendor. And then, uh, you know, a, a spring tradition unlike any other. Uh, I got to watch the uh, the fail train fail to reach the station for the 85th consecutive year. Uh, it was a pretty good day all in all for this Southern Indiana Hoosier. Yeah, it was uh, kind of cool. I was uh, ironically um, on the golf course 
Uh, first time in six months. I keep saying that because I don't want people to think that's what I do. I haven't done that in forever, but it was wild. And the fact that it turned out to be an absolutely beautiful day, perfect uh, viewing opportunity for for this event. And it, it was it was weird, man. And when it got it, the totality hit and it got dark, I'm like, wow, it's wild. And then when the what do they call it? The diamond? Is it the white diamond? I forget what they call it. But when the diamond came out, holy crap. I see why I now I know exactly why they call it that. Yeah, I mean, I I it you you can understand when you just see how um just unworldly the uh the appearance is why ancient civilizations just you know sacrificed anything and everything at their disposal trying to appease the gods uh to see the sun literally just go away and, and nightfall and and the, everything that, that comes with it it's just it's the most unnatural thing you've ever seen uh and, and just jaw-droppingly beautiful and, and you know for four minutes of it was uh it was a sight to bolt it was it was really amazing um, almost as amazing as how wildly they missed the, uh, you know, the turnout, what the participation would be in the area. Uh, I'm glad they prepared for it. Lord knows how many, uh, overtime hours, uh, the County and every, everybody in the safety business had to, had to log, uh, in anticipation and, uh, you know, lo and behold, it was, it was just another day in Bloomington. So, uh, it was cool to see, cool to experience, nice not to have to travel, uh, like in 2017, uh, cause we were back on our couch watching, uh, watching what I think most, most people thought would happen. And, uh, you know, when you've got two players that score 80 plus percent of your points, uh, it's going to be tough to be the team like UConn. So, uh, heck of a tournament, uh, pretty predictable end, uh, I, I would say, uh, but now I'm really ready, uh, put this year behind fully and uh, maybe talk about some tournaments next year and, and those that follow that uh, feature the Hoosiers a little more prominently. Uh, Brad sent me a uh, fun Purdue fact. The last total solar eclipse in Indiana was August 7, 9, no, 1869. Purdue was founded in May of 1869. And, of course, I don't know what that has to do with – and he says this year – their year to get over the hump question mark nope, nope. Uh, no. but the answer to that is no um it's going to be interesting to see what it's like for purdue going forward i know that everyone says well they've got you know will berg at seven two having a seven footer doesn't always mean greatness uh they had they've had harms and they've had other guys in there before it always helps but um athletic ability that's the difference donovan Klingen is an athletic seven foot two guy and he brings so much to the table Edie is dominant that's what he is um in 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 college beyond question i don't know how well that's going to translate to the nba because in the in the nba you cannot camp out in the lane on in defense there's a three second rule on defense um, so I, it's going to be interesting to see him chasing guys getting switched off onto Kyrie Irving and trying to keep up with him or someone of that ilk. But, uh, and now moving forward, what, what's it going to, what's life going to be like for Purdue? They, they get the final four monkey off their back after 43 years. So they've got that going for them. And, but now I'm thinking about the big 10 next year. Man, we kind of go into it with a complete unknown. You know, last year we knew it was Purdue and Illinois was going to be right there. Is next year Illinois' year? Brad Underwood has really been, he's been consistent uh, over there. And of course, they're going to lose Terrence Shannon Jr., though, uh, one way or another uh, off of that team. But next year in the Big Ten, it's going to be interesting. Because we don't know. We don't know what teams are going to look like. We don't know what Indiana's going to look like, much less. Uh, we know what Purdue will look like. I don't know what they'll play like. But as far as roster construction, they're not going to uh, change a whole lot. Does Mitt, uh, Matt Painter 
use the portal at all? That would be curious. But Indiana is chronic. Uh, one of the things I brought up earlier, and, I, and I'm sure you will agree with this, I'm sick and tired of seeing Indiana fans just bitch and moan about every single little thing. I'm over it. I am over it, over it. And if that's coming from me, let me tell you, that that because nobody bitches and complains more about things than I do. But I've reached my limit. Shut up. It's constant. It, it, it's, it's pointless. I'm like, what are you talking about? Quit, quit complaining about Woodson. He's the coach. So shut up. Shut up about it. Uh, they've got to go. They're going to have to go through the season. No matter what, that, that'll that take care of itself. If he's not the guy to get it done, that's going to show itself next year. Uh, but they are, I, I will say he seems to have learned some lessons in his recruiting tactics because this year they are attacking it like they have not done so in their three previous or their three seasons in Bloomington. Yeah, I'm I'm real curious to see if this isn't uh kind of the the opening window to when you start seeing some of those fruits start to pop for uh for those recruiting efforts. Uh I I think this is the critical time now once the uh once the season's officially over. Um you've got a window between now and finals uh and the end of the uh the academic calendar where um I, I think things start opening up. Uh, the coaching carousel, as we saw yesterday, is is still not done churning, and I think that's going to continue to uh, to turn up uh, more available portal additions. Um, but it's really going to be a mad dash between now and uh, you know the end of this month, beginning of May, for a lot of these uh, these portal entries to find homes. And uh, you, you certainly hope and, and would imagine that everybody's doing their due diligence. Um, I have to remind. A lot of my friends when talking about this, you know, it's a two way street. Um, it's not just giving the, you know, the teams and the programs the opportunity to review the uh, uh, the film and, and really scour and see what 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 fits are best. It's got to work for the kids, too. They've got to find a place where, you know, they're they're needed, they're wanted and uh, the culture and, and the program and the style and all that fits. So, you know, part of it is it, it just takes time. There's a filtering process that, that has to take place. Um, and, and not the least of that is just the physical logistics of getting kids on campus, getting some open gym run with the, uh, with the returning members and, and really giving everybody a chance to see how that's going to line up. Um, but I, I think you're going to see that start accelerating here now, um, now that the season's over and, and you've got this opportunity because, you know, the, the school calendar still weighs heavily on this process. In addition to the, uh, the NCAA mandated periods uh these kids have got to make grades they've got to stay eligible and you know that's that's a whole nother component is you know do the credits transfer would they get admission so on and so on but those gears all moving now in full force and uh i would imagine uh you'll probably start seeing uh more announcements about uh additions and signings uh and, and really coming on full here over the next couple of weeks yeah, it's uh, it's going to be very interesting to see when that starts to pop because there have, are some visits that have, have happened, more visits for Indiana that are expected to to happen that are coming non kind of nonstop. It will uh, continue to pop. One of the more recent ones that uh, is, should be uh, visiting Indiana, Minnesota transfer big man Farrell Payne, and Todd Leary was on with us yesterday and talked about. He, he, he hopes that Indiana doesn't land too many big guys because he does not want Mike Woodson to have the opportunity to continue to play this buddy ball type of offense, uh, the antiquated uh, let's pound it inside kind of thing because that's not what wins in college. Um, he is going to have to adopt a, a, a method that, that it brings into use the three point shot. And to do that, you have to have three point shot makers. Mackenzie Abaco started coming, coming into his own at the end of the season, but 
you, you've got to add pieces. And I don't, uh, I don't want to hear about Trey Galloway. Not from you, I mean, but for people. Trey Galloway, he's not that guy. I, I'm sorry, but he's not that guy. Um, they're going to have to be brought in. and But they're going to have to have them. You, you're going to have to have you, – you still have to have a, a presence in the middle, but they have that. They've got uh, Malik Renu, and they're going to have to have a backup for him because I'm still not confident. I wouldn't be confident as a fan that he could stay out of foul trouble yet. Uh, but other than that, man, they need to be a team of guards and wings. And that's where the game is played. Uh, wings that can shoot and get to the basket. No, I think it's it, it's that mentality now that everybody on the floor has to have um, has to have a bag. Uh, you know, yes, you're still going to, you're going to have tall guys, you know, such as the Zach Eadies who can just dominate the post. Yes. You're going to have guys that, uh, you know, just absolute marksmen that, that can just snipe from anywhere on the floor. Uh, you're going to have some guys that specialize in those things. But I think as you look at the way the games evolved, you look at how championships are being won. Now you have to present, uh, dynamicism, uh, both offensively and defensively, um, You've got to have depth. You've got to have, you know, experience tends to win the day uh, when things get tight. Um, it, it, a number of different things going into how how the modern game is being played. And I, I think the portal provides an opportunity that you can get there really quickly if done well, if done strategically. Um, you know, I think I saw a stat last week, 55% of the final four uh, players had, had previously been on other rosters. Uh, the majority of the guys, the final four were transfers. Um, but, you know, look at the role that veteran leadership plays. Uh, had it, and not to cut you off, Connie, had that had Purdue not been in it and been another team, I'd say that number would be 75%. Yeah, no, un unquestionably. Um, it's just, it's, it's where the game is now. Um, and will probably continue to be for some time, honestly, unless they, uh, unless they make some pretty significant changes to uh, to the way the players are allowed to transfer. But I think we're going in the opposite direction uh, rather than becoming more restrictive in that regard. And that's not to say that you may not see a, um, you know, an acknowledgement of, of some sort of an employment status that contracts them to a minimum stay before they're eligible without a immediate eligibility to transfer. But um, I have been saying that for a minute. I, I don't understand how and why they haven't been able to come up with that yet. Yeah, you know, because you haven't called them employees yet. And until you do, you're not going to give them the freedom to contract as a union. Uh, well, what about contracting with the NIL? Yeah, but no, I mean, there's, now, there's a number of ways separate. to go about it. There's a number of ways to go about it. But that's the thing, the way it's currently structured, you can't make it a pay-to-play thing, uh, at least right. not under the NCAA's current model. So until they get past that and acknowledge, you know, the athletes for what they are, uh, you're going to continue to see these convoluted rules that never achieved the uh, the desired goal because they can't make that one big step as far as status and classification. Uh, all that said, though, um, you know, to your original point, uh, I, you need to see some shooters. You got to see some guys that can score the basketball in a multitude of ways. And uh, as UConn reminds us, you've got to have guys that are bought into whatever your defensive philosophy is, and they have to be willing to go all in on that. Um, and I, I think that's been a, um, you know, that's it's been something that Woodson has has prioritized from the beginning. Um, every season, you know, defensively, they're so much further along than they are offensively. Um, you know, it, it took a while to get there this year. It still wasn't good enough. Um, uh, but you know, they, they continue to grow and thrive, uh, now find an offensive identity to go with that. And then maybe you're cooking. Yeah. Uh, a lot of talk about the, uh, viewership for women's basketball, the, uh, women's title game, 18.7 million viewers. I know the IU UConn game was like 18.2 million, which is great. And it's wonderful. My first point is who carries that torch on? Angel Reese gone, ain't uh, uh, Caitlin Clark gone. Uh, you got Paige Beckers, but there's the the kind of the stars of the last couple of years in in the in the girls game, they're gone. Uh, the big time stars, and also something thing people need to consider is you can't cherry pick a couple of games and then try to compare it to the men's side. Uh, I, I'm not 
trying to make this a sexist thing, but I'm also trying to keep people into reality here. It's it's not the same. Um, and the the uh, the constant call for total equality and pay for this and that. There's a reason why when the women's national soccer team was making substantially less than the men's, it had nothing to do with what they are being paid by the United States Federation. And it was because of the total TV pool money out of the entire league. The men's side draws 10 times as much, so the pay was higher. And that's just a simple fact of life. And I don't think it's fair that just because you're another sex, you can scream sexism and get paid more than what your the true value is. Um, but not trying to stir a, start that fire, but uh, just it's hard to, to ignore reality as well. Yeah, you're not wrong there, but I think the thing that that um, that changed this year is the, the eyeballs followed the women's game, and yes, it's very much driven by the star power. Um, you know, just some absolute Goliath players who all kind of coexisted at the same time in the sport. Um, you know, the records that that fell this year um, under Kate, Caitlin Clark just. It, it was a perfect storm to get people paying attention to the game. And, you know, that's been the biggest, um, you know, the biggest counterpoint to all the arguments, you know, in favor of, of, of giving women sports more, more credibility, more visibility has just been the demand wasn't there. Um, well, now you see the demand. I mean, in record numbers, the most watched basketball game since 2019, uh, for the women's final men's or women's basketball game, the most watched. Um, I, I think that hopefully is a watershed moment for the sport. Um, now it's, it's going to take, um, you know, a continued elevation of the game. Uh, you talk about the passing the torch. I don't know, um, who the heir parents are necessarily, but I think it's going to be critical that, that people continue to tune in, that they show up and buy tickets, uh, that the networks continue to broadcast because I, you know, what people discovered this year is what a lot of us have, have known for, you know, the better part of two, three decades plus, um, the women's game is good and it's getting better every year. Um, I, I think it'll be good for the sport when you see the rest of the field start to elevate their game and become more competitive with the South Carolinas, the Baylors, the, the LSUs, um, you know, the, the preeminent teams, um, you know, it's, we're not that far removed, though, from, uh, you know, 10 years ago, pre-Terry Moore, and you never in a million years would imagine Indiana would be giving the eventual national championship or the in, eventual national championship all they can handle and then some. Uh, but here we are. Um, now, when you can see more teams make those investments and yield those returns, uh, I think the game will only grow from that point on. Uh, but it, it will be interesting to see how viewership, how attendance carries next year without those stars present. But I think, you know, the, the big step this year was just getting people to acknowledge um, the girls are good. Uh, they got game and it's, it's, it's worth watching and tuning in and showing up and supporting. And uh, I think that's only a good thing, not just for the women's sports, but for the game as a whole, for college athletics as a whole. Um, you know, I've been screaming for the <laughs> For the last 30 plus years, uh, there are so many benefits living in the college town, not the least of which is just the ample, affordable entertainment opportunities available for families. And, um, you know, women's basketball is a prime example of a uh, bang for your buck in the entertainment sector. So couldn't be happier to see the game grow. Oh, absolutely. And the biggest thing in the women's game is the fact that it's not Tennessee or UConn just destroying everybody else. Uh, or maybe being one other team, whether it was, you know, Baylor. Well, now there's multiple teams that, that could challenge. I mean, Indiana gave South Carolina all they wanted. Uh, and that's because obviously Terry Moore has elevated that program. Uh, I think, was it North, somebody else, North Carolina state that mm -hmm. uh, battled, uh, gave them a great battle. Um, these, there are, there are more teams uh in the men's side this year there was like i'm like there's 14 teams that can make the final four and uh, although the two best 
made it there and which is what what ultimately what you want uh that's what you want to see in a national championship game but um now all eyes are towards next year chronic and uh for uh purdue it's going to be a new life no more zach Eady to rely on and i know purdue fans are they think they're going to be fine and i'm like yeah that's what you might be exactly fine but are you going to be elite? And the goal is to be elite. And that's what we'll see how that turns out. Indiana's in the same boat, though. Uh, but I don't know if they're better off because they have the ability to add the pieces that are needed and can do so out of the portal for the most part, basically ready-made, ready to go if they're the right pieces. And But if they have to also be coached, in the right manner. Uh, what the offense that Indiana has, has run thus far is not going to win in modern day college. Um, you cannot run the ball through the middle, just nonstop. You've got to have shooters. You've got to have guys that can get to the basket. You've got to have guys that puts pressure on uh, the opposing team. Indiana has to come up with it. Mike Woodson's team has to, uh, has to come up with that. They are casting a very, very wide net in this portal. No doubt. And I think the thing with Indiana that's a little bit different is um, I think they are less locked into a particular style right now. They are a little more malleable as far as what the future is going to look like. Uh, and that's good and bad. They, bad part is because they don't know what their style is. Yeah, you're exactly right. I, I think that's it 100%. Uh, they don't necessarily have an identity that they've built around up to this point. I think Purdue has perhaps a bigger challenge in that regard because they have been so locked in on that particular tracks where they play inside out. And, you know, Zach Eady has been able to bail them out for the better part of three years when things aren't working on the perimeter, just dump it down low and let the big guy eat. And, uh, you know, we saw eventually we saw the limits of that style last night against a very deep, a very um, talented uh, and a very locked in team. Um, you know, the guards just were not good enough for Purdue last night, as was the case last year. They got better this year, but um, that length and athleticism really stood out last night. That said, though, I mean, that mold is pretty much set in stone for how Purdue's going to play. So it's going to be, you know, I think they're going to have a greater challenge plugging that massive hole inside now without Zach Eady, um, putting that much more pressure on their backcourt. Uh, to kind of bridge the gap for them. Um, you know, good, bad, I'm not sure. Uh, I think Indiana perhaps, you know, they certainly have a volume issue to contend with that Purdue's not going to deal with. Uh, but I think Indiana is going to be a little bit more nimble as far as making whatever pieces they pick up work. Um, but, you know, in this day and age, uh, these guys got to earn those million dollar contracts somehow. So reinventing your team on the fly is, is becoming the, uh, the new norm, I suppose. Absolutely. Chronic Hoosier. I hope you have a, uh, great rest of your week. We look forward to talking to you again. Be well guys. Take care. Absolutely. Yeah. Chronic Hoosier brought to you by Andy Moore Honda. Just go to andymorehonda.com and get more to your door. In the best of new and used vehicles. We're back with more Indiana Sports Speed Radio right after this. We'll be right back for more Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. In the All right, John, we got to start using the autograph. <clears throat> um, autograph, free think, uh -huh. chop shop, ugly. We use grouper. free think for first segment. Okay, I know I'm just rattling these off. Autograph, free think, my or um, chop shop, ugly grouper, who's your Hank, Reynolds, Bubba's, Remax, all of those have to make sure we those go in. Okay, yeah, day. I usually, I think we hit almost all those today, actually. But if you want, send me um, after the show, send me an order in which you would like them to be every day. If you have a specific, oh, I don't have a specific order. <clears throat> um. Excuse me. I well, when Todd's on, they use uh, oh, yeah, you do my, my jump shot. shot. Gotcha. We'll start. I'll I'll, I'll update the um, all the segment liners because I know I got to add a few, especially the my jump shot and basically anything I don't have a, a liner for. So, 
I'll do that here this week. We also pray and update our ads, some of our ads at least. And um, anybody yeah. out there that uh, has a business looking to do some advertising, don't forget your friends here at Indiana Sports Beat Radio. We have a. Uh, oh, also, we should on. do this last segment while I'm thinking about it. I don't want to forget. Uh, let us know who won the the bracket challenge since that's over. I'm glad you brought. I'm glad you brought that back up. I had that in my mind, and I forget. I can guess and tell you. I already know. Justin, he just funny funny. Right when I said that, he, I got a message from him on Facebook saying that he won. I'm guaranteeing you it is, <clears throat> and I'm. He's won. Uh, 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 the only way that he's going to get to win is if he starts. Playing lay, laying bets down for me. <laughs> he had the entire final four, but he was not he alone. He had all four. He had every single one. The top two at least had the final. Four. I was gonna say, if you get the top four, you're almost guaranteed to win your pool because that's nuts. Well, he was a uh, at the. I don't know where I placed in yours. I'm looking at another one. I got ninth in one of mine. Let me see what I did in Indiana Sports Beat. Hey, I ended up 50th. What did I get here? Out of, um, how many was there? Why can't I find the Indiana? Oh, I got 66th. <laughs> I didn't do too good. In, in, I, got 50, one. I got 50 out of 113. Did me. I got killed. I got killed early. So did I. All right, here we go. Meal at home or pick out a tomahawk steak or a grouper filet and enjoy it cooked to perfection in Chop Shop Steakhouse. Chop Shop Market and Table, a part of the Wild Food Group, is your butcher, baker, and fish house, no matter where you live. This segment is brought to you by Reynolds Family Dentistry in Sellersburg. Welcome back to Indiana Sports Beat Radio with Jim Coyle, presented by Andy Moore Honda of Bloomington. Welcome back. Indiana Sports Speed Radio on this Tuesday. Hope you're doing well. The NCAA tournament just wrapped up with UConn taking home their sixth national championship and uh, checking the Indiana Sports Speed fans' uh, fantasy tournament bracket. The winner, Justin B. Justin Beard. He edged out Jason from Fort Wayne. For that was second. Zach, you've got third. Uh, Gary tied for third. Oh, there was a one, two, three, three-way tie for third. Zach, Gary, and Brian. A lot of these names that I remember from being up the top. The other ones, man, you guys are good. Justin. You're not going to get anything unless you start placing bets for me. Um, I'm pulling up his bracket. And he had UConn. Did he have Alabama, I think? I want to, because I got kind of screwed up the other day. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So he had that. And I, I don't know how in the world he had... NC State beating. Well, he had NC State. Uh, he had them in the final four because that is all four. That's ballsy right there. If you have NC State, because that's somebody who came out of. Did they come out of the play? No, they didn't. They didn't. They weren't in the play in, but they were close to it. Wait a minute. I'm, NC State played their way in by winning the ACC. I don't know that he did. I think game. he. I'm not sure they had NC State. I'm, wait, I'm trying to read okay. this. If he did, then um, props to him because that's very unlikely to have. Yes. No, he – I think he picked Kentucky. Yeah, he had Kentucky. He had Kentucky, and as did I. Okay. But uh, he, he had the other three. But more importantly, he had the top two and the top one. Uh, what was the final score? 75 to 60. Uh, let's see. That's a hundred and what? 35. Got an under. Yeah. The, the, under, under, the, the over good. under, I believe was one forty and a half. So the under hit oh last night, but, uh, congratulations. 
and we'll put together a prize package for you. Oh yeah, send a, you've got to send your address, uh, mailing address, just email it. Or send a direct to, message uh, on Facebook or Twitter, either or. Yeah, anyway, you know, there's a thousand different ways to reach me. Indiana Sports Beat at gmail.com or one of the other myriad of ways of reaching me. Also, um, who did I say was second place? Uh, Jason, do the same. We're going to put put together a prize package for you as well. Um, looking down Also, one years. thing that I think I've teased before on this show, Jim, I think I will be able to start doing this maybe as early as next week. Do we want to start doing the voicemail line for – for listeners to call in and give us things to talk about. We don't have to do it, but I know we've talked talked about doing it. Begrudgingly, yes, we will do that. And, and here's the thing. We, when we do that, it's not going to be something where we, we automatically play just because you call in. I'll be able to screen those. If you listen to the podcast, it'll work the exact same way, the Out of Touch podcast, that is. But uh, it'll be your opportunity to, to hear your own voice on the show. And if you have a comment or a question that you'd like Jim or one of his guests or even my silly behind to answer, then you could send that to the number that I don't have at the moment. But whenever we or do Or it that, may not be a question. It may be a criticism. Oh, yeah. Cri we, you, you can say whatever you want that, you know, within the confines of radio. If you come on and there's swearing or things that I can't put on the air, then we just... I can't that stand that Jim guy. You're, this would be a great show if he wasn't on there. <laughs> so that, that's something to look forward to here in the very near future holy crap that can't be I me mean, it must be his max points I'm trying to read that screen oh well well so now basketball is done but not done so now we enter the recruiting season or some call it the frequency and, period now. With, with well, well actually, ball. is exactly what it is. Then after that, well, that goes on for a while. Till the but, is the uh, day is it May first that the portal closes this year? Does it in terms of it, putting your name to, in it? Uh, I feel like every to, year so far the the dates have changed on when you can and can't enter the portal. Uh, the transport portal will close at the end of, is this accurate? Tuesday. Wait a minute. This is, oh, that's for football. I pulled the wrong ones up. They're separate, different dates. Um, when does the basketball portal close? I thought it had to do with the draft. I remember it was around the same time. Um, I don't, but again, those dates could be different from last year. So we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at that and hopefully have that. Well, I mean, we will have that information soon, especially when it becomes, they did. Now they, they did short have, um, and yeah, cause it was way can, too long last year. They, they shortened the, the transfer portal for college basketball to 45 days. It was previously 60 days and that was aggravating the coaches. Cause it's like, geez, you know, it's, it's already tough enough to get a roster set up. Um, but so they shorten it, uh, and I'm quickly trying to, uh, it will open co college football, for example, will open its portal 30 days after the regular season ends from reopening 15 and in April 15th, the 30th men's and women's college basketball players will have 45 days after the regular season ends but will not reopen at any point in the off season. So, I mean, so the 45 days began at the end of the regular clock, season. Yes. That, that yes, clock so has started. We're, we're probably under 30 days at this point. Oh, it may be May. Oh, 1st. We're, we're well under 30 days. I mean, I bet it's May 1st. Is, like we mentioned, I don't know if we, if we talked about that earlier, but I'm sure it's because the regular season ended before the, the, of the college tournament speak, the college conference tournaments began. yeah it was the beginning of march second so, or, yeah about the second week of march i believe maybe third so yeah so you're looking at uh another couple of weeks so we'll start to see things happening uh um, indiana may have the roster solidified i mean it has to be very near that. close to solidified 
for for Indiana's sake, considering they only have one incoming freshman at the moment. Yeah, we'll see about that. Uh, tomorrow, it's a Wednesday. Dylan Sin will join us. Kyle Nenrep will join us. Rick Bozich will join us. And I am sure we'll have lots more to talk about as uh, I, I think that Indiana is going to start picking up guys. Uh, Purdue uh, picking up the pieces. What's it like in Boilerville? Uh, very disappointing for them today, but I, I, I don't think many, if anybody outside of West Lafayette expected a different outcome than last night. Uh, I wasn't one of those. So looking forward to getting back after tomorrow. Appreciate everybody on the program today, especially Mike DeCourcy and Karate Kuzier. It's great to have John, the producer back. Most importantly, each and every one of you. Without you, we have no reason to be here. Go out and have yourselves a great day. Until tomorrow, I'm Jim Coyle. I will see you on the radio. Thanks for listening to Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page for more clips and team coverage of Indiana basketball, football, and more. You can also find full episodes and tons of other content on thehoosier.com. We'll see you next time for another edition of Indiana Sports Beat Radio.